Welcome back to Crime After Crime. I'm John Lorden. And I am Danielle Hallen. And welcome da back. Welcome back. Danielle, we are just weeks away from Crime Con. And of course, mm -hmm. that means our big Florida finale. Oh my gosh. I'm so torn between excitement and sadness. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. And I'm like, come on, hype yourself up. Yeah. Well, I know we're going to do it right. We always do. Oh, absolutely. At CrimeCon. We've had some of the best meetups mm -hmm. and events, and we're just wrapping that yeah. together with, I mean, we did the live stream from CrimeCon yeah. once. It's going to be interesting, though, because like having people watch us while we're actually I was about doing to say, show, we've never we've never done it like eye to eye with an audience. So yeah, yeah. if any of you want me to lose, just stare me directly in the eye without blinking for too long. <laughs> oh, good. So I just need to hand out a couple yeah. 20s to people. Okay. You stare. Absolutely. Stare. And just get them to just stare at me and I will shut down. So <laughs> Danielle, we could bring a little black curtain that we could put around you. <laughs> and they'll just know that you're back there. <laughs> yeah. Where's Danielle? Yeah. She's just hiding. Oh, speaking of which, are you going to bring the trophy? Um, I can. Yeah. I think you should. I think we should okay. offer a, a photo op with, with okay. you, you and the trophy. The trophy. <laughs> the trophy. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Another option too, I can just turn and face the other direction. <laughs> That'd be great. We'll just have That'd to stare great. at the back of my head. It'll yeah. be it'll be fine. There we go. <laughs> we'll get a little side mirror or something. Kind of yeah. See the side of your face. <laughs> okay, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And I know it's going to be great. Of course, looking into more Florida crimes, I'm already excited just about how the episode's going to come out. And of course, oh, absolutely, being there being in the motherland of florida man <laughs> florida woman florida person yeah. yeah oh i can't wait it's gonna be great honestly danielle i had a story pop up on my news feed a few weeks ago and you were like this might be the one i i sent it to myself i'm like mm, florida Bloop. oh my gosh i'm already collecting already collecting stories so you better get on it game yeah i was about to say i need to boogie because yeah it's coming it's coming. Oh, jeez. Of course, now we have to discuss what happened with the results for our last episode, Airplane Crimes. Mm -hmm. Now, Emily on Twitter, it's, well, it's not Twitter anymore. It's X, I guess. But it sounds really wrong to say Emily was on X when she told us Yes. This, but it's, she, yeah. she was. She was. <laughs> I, I still mastermind I behind this decision. Let me tell you. I know, man. Like, <laughs> all I'm seeing in the media now is X formerly known as Twitter. So <laughs> everyone's still saying Twitter. It yeah. would have just been fine. But anyway. you know what? Maybe you can get people to jump on that bandwagon of just pretending that it's still Twitter to yeah. the point where no one calls it X and then there's no choice but to just go back. Yeah, just let it go. Anyway, Emily <laughs> was on X when she told us this. Uh, not sure who to vote for this month. Both stories are so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And you'll find out that she was right when you hear these results. Now, Danielle told us about a sneaky stowaway, a woman who could not only get into an airport without a ticket, which is hard enough, but mm -hmm. also onto airplanes and even in hotel rooms without spending any money at all. I told the story of the mid-air murderer. We'll just call him Larry and how yeah. he became the first hijacker in the U.S. and the first person to kill someone else on the same plane during flight. How did it all play out, Danielle? All right, you guys. So on Twitter, I received 53% of the votes. I'm calling it Twitter. So I've told you, I've already <laughs> yeah, started this bandwagon. It's locked in. That's it. <laughs> and John received 47%. So close. Don't get too excited because things kind of get a little twisty here. On the website poll, I received 46% of the votes and John receives 54. So I'm sure <gasps> you're like, well, wait a minute. What? What? What now? Yeah. Don't worry. John's good at math. So he figured it out. And the votes combined, he wins 53% to 47. Honestly, I give it to him because what in the world? Yeah, that guy. We we were talking about it before we started recording mm -hmm. today. That guy, Larry. <laughs> that guy, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's quite a Larry. Um, yeah, yeah. Basically, the website poll, uh, the website gets about 10 times the amount of votes mm -hmm. that the Twitter poll does. So... That's why that percentage. No one kinda... wants to be on X. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one wants to be on X. You hear that, kids? Don't be on X. No one wants to be. On yeah. X. <laughs> All right, Danielle. Where is it? It's been a long time <laughs> since I've seen that mug. You Listen, hand it over. 
it's still the old one since my other one broke. Oh, but okay. I uh, mean, I guess you can have this we'll one. See what happens. Oh no, it's the new one. Why there are you go, lying? It updated itself. Now you're lying to me. She it's lies. because listen, it's because we're not using Skype. Oh, now that's what things it is. just update real time, and you don't have to wait for it forever. And so you know, it worked out. <laughs> oh my god, we tried to use Skype last yeah. time. It was a nightmare. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. Skype, it's over. I know. So uh, for today's episode, you know, on previous episodes, mm -hmm. we've had some really interesting crimes related to food, like when Danielle told the story of the great maple syrup heist back. So one our, of my favorites. It was that was a really good one. And who knew? Like, who I knew <laughs> about that? I mean, it's treated like like diamonds or something yeah. like it's it's a crazy mm -hmm. industry. Uh, that was back in our Canadian crimes episode. Uh, I also told a story about the wine locker robbery which you might remember from our Black oh, yeah. Friday Crimes Part 2 episode. Another crazy one where people mm -hmm. are uh, making off with all kinds of wine and then plan on blowing up the building, but they don't pull it off right. And hey, that's how these heists go sometimes. Yeah. But uh, we thought, why not focus specifically on food heists? Because we're finding all these great food heist stories. So oh, yeah. that's what we're doing here today. Now, foodandwine.com regularly reports on crazy food crimes. Honestly, it's like way more than you would think to. <laughs> I encourage all of you to go and Google it. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, a thief who stole $15,000 in beef from a Georgia steakhouse in 2022. 15 grand. That's a lot. That's a lot of beef. That's a whole lot of beef. Where did he put it? Or the thief that stole over $4,000 in pasta from a little Minnesota County Fair just a few weeks ago. What are you going to do with all that pasta, thief? Exactly. Like, I love pasta, and that's that's a lot of pasta. Yeah. But it stays, right? I mean, yeah, if you're going to steal true. something, it's easier to, to hold on to that much pasta than $15,000 worth of beef. Yeah. That's not going to work well for them. <laughs> now, my personal favorite, you guys, there was an axe-wielding man who held up a Voodoo Donuts in Oregon at 3 a.m. Now, did he want money? No, of course not. Okay. He jumped over the counter and filled up a box of donuts and then left. And he was caught a block away eating a donut. Okay. What else would he be doing? <laughs> so I have to ask, have you had voodoo donuts? I have never, but donuts are probably one of my favorite things in the entire world. And I definitely follow Voodoo Donuts all over social media just to at least see them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would it would be a dream of mine to have a Voodoo Donut. Yeah, I've I've had them. They're very good. Uh, they also have vegan alternatives, so they kind of come oh, up awesome. on our yeah. radar. Um, if I recall correctly, I think they have one at Universal Orlando in the kind of mm. City Walk complex out there. And I got to say, they are a really, really good donut, but... There is, and I don't know if this is a chain or if this is just something I have, like literally in a town that I'm close to. There's yeah. this place out here called Duck Donuts. Oh yeah, we have that. Mm. You have that? Oh, so good, yeah. Duck Donuts, it's kind of next level and they make them like fresh, like yep. kind of made to order. And it's almost, I don't know, it's its hard to describe, but they, they have all these kind of wacky toppings and things that they do. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's almost like going to the county fair on a donut. Mm -hmm. they have this they have a very similar thing um at the beach where i go yeah and it's not duck donuts but it's something a little different and you get to choose literally every single aspect of your donut they change the flavors all the time it's like oh, y'all i just i love donuts so yeah. i mean i can't really blame this man why he figured he needed an axe to do this i don't know yeah yeah uh of course there was also a man who drove off with an entire truck full of jack daniels in atlanta back in 2020 and that man's name was John Lorden. I knew it. No, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I used to drink some Jack Daniels. Yeah. But I kind of, yeah, I kind of aged out of that, I think. Uh, I don't think this man was ever found. They did find the truck, but most of the booze was gone. Yeah, not too surprising. Sounds yeah. like we have a lot of cases to choose from. We certainly do. So grab a snack legally, please. Please. And... <laughs> Get ready for our first food heist story told by the amazing Danielle Hallen. Take it away, Danielle. Okay, so hear me out, all right? This is not a typical heist story because I feel like when you imagine a heist, you're thinking something huge, a large amount of something stolen. And I even had to like Google it and see if there was like a legal definition of heist or anything like that. And it's, it's kind of very, very loose, okay? But when I was researching... 
I actually realized that we've already spoken about a lot of a large food heist on this podcast, like you already said. Okay. Yeah. Even if it's not been the main topic. Like, okay, jammy dodgers, hello, maple <laughs> syrup, cheese. We've crossed the board. I don't know if that says something about John and I or what, but I was like, <laughs> you know what? I've got to try to find something a little bit different and interesting. So I found a crime that honestly is a bit brazen. And this criminal managed to pull it off not once, not twice, but numerous times. And it was a food heist that the media has dubbed the gourmet getaway. Mm, okay. I like it. Wednesday, November 10th, 2010. And also, I have to preface this by saying I have to pronounce things in French. And it's not been a good week trying to figure this out. But, so spare me. But, um, Lot Peed. Okay. We're going to move on. It's it's a restaurant. They were busy setting up for a dinner. It's a it's a really cute French restaurant nestled in London's West End. And the previous year, they'd actually just received their first Michelin star. Mm-hmm. Big thing. So the food was to die for. There's like these amazing handcrafted tables. And they have a bunch of like exquisite artwork on the walls. It's just a, it's an overall experience. Like you're not just going to eat. And so a lot of different families kind of, you know, chose this restaurant for a quiet midweek fancier dinner and a younger couple and they're a younger couple. Youngles? Words. The youngles? Yeah, youngles. The youngles. <laughs> the, the youngles. <laughs> a younger couple in their 20s was amongst the reservations that night. And they were seated at their table. They dined on the delicious ever-changing menu. They ordered two servings of foie gras and mackerel as a starter. Rinsed that down with a high-priced bottle of champagne. They slowly moved on to their main course of venison and hare, accompanied by a second bottle of champagne. And the couple this entire time was respectful. You know, they held themselves well. Nothing really seemed to be amiss. So when they got up to take a smoke break out front while they were waiting for their plum tart, no one really batted an eye. Okay. Until their dessert was brought to their table, and the couple still had not returned. So a few minutes passed and the waiter checked the table again to find it empty. And sure enough, out front, there was no sign of the couple that had racked up a 572 pound bill. (gasps) Oh, no. They dined and dashed, Danielle. (laughs) Yes. So the manager, right, is informed and he quickly tried to calm the nerves of the staff saying, hey, you guys, probably just a misunderstanding. Maybe they just forgot to pay because they, you know, are throwing back bottles of wine. Okay. Maybe there's an emergency. Try to give them the benefit of the doubt. And they're like, either way, it should be easy to get in contact with this couple. Because first of all, being a Michelin star restaurant, they take the names and numbers of every single guest yeah. and you know, want to make sure. And so they found that the reservation was made under the name of Lupin and called the number given. Okay. The number went nowhere. And this is finally, yeah, when panic began to set in. Checking the CCTV footage from the restaurant, the couple is seen headed out for their smoke break. But instead of standing out front, lighting up a cigarette, they hastily walk away. This couple had literally dined and dashed a Michelin star restaurant. (laughs) Brazen, like I said. Yeah, yeah. So authorities were notified and a search began for the couple. And it was quickly realized, you know, just like the phone number, that the name was also likely fake. And what's interesting is that the name was even possibly kind of a mockery of the crime itself. Because Lupin is not only the name used for the reservation, but it's also um, a fictional French thief that is read about in, like, popular books and things like that. I think it's, like, Arsene Lupin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his first name right. And basically... This man is a master of disguise, a criminal genius, and his character is known for elaborate plots and ability to outsmart most and lead a double life. Oh my God. Why and so would they're like French that restaurant. Name? That is, yeah. yeah, French genius criminal. Right. And so it was clear this was not a random dine and dash. Whoever did this planned everything. So authorities didn't have much to go off of. And in a desperate plea, they decided to release the CCTV footage to the media. And they're just hoping at this point that they will have someone that recognizes the couple. um, But instead, they just opened a massive can of worms. One by one, other well-known London restaurants reached out with very, very similar stories. They had a serial dinner thief on their hands. So the Glass House, which is another Michelin star restaurant, complained of an unpaid bill back in October 
I think it was October 14th to be exact, and just a few weeks prior, essentially. And the manager stated that a couple matching the description of the one seen on CCTV came in for a reservation. And this couple was incredibly kind and polite, claimed they were from Belgium. I mean, accents and all, like the whole shebang. Um, And they took their time enjoying their meal, ordered multiple cocktails, bottles of wine, champagne, had an expensive starter course, and eventually they ordered dessert. And so multiple members of the staff had noticed that the couple repeatedly left their table during their dinner for smoke breaks. And while this isn't incredibly uncommon, like the amount of times that they were getting up and going, it just felt a little bit off. And so they were already a little bit on alert. And sure enough, just like the previous restaurant, after ordering dessert, the couple slipped out. And Mm -hmm. when they never returned to their table to pay their 350-pound bill, staff at the glass house, I know, they're just racking it up. They kind of had the same idea of, you know what, don't panic. Maybe it's an emergency or there's some sort of explanation we're not aware of. And so, you know, they also had even more reason to believe this because when they looked through things, this couple had left a bag with the receptionist. And inside of the bag, it appeared to be a very expensive looking package. And so they're like, they're not going to run out on this bill and leave their expensive package behind, um, you know. They were trying, I think, to rationalize it in their brains, but curiosity ultimately got the best of them, and they decided to take a look at the package. It was a bottle of orange juice. And it said sucker on it. Sucker. Honestly, (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised if it did. It was literally all just part of the scam. And yet again, of course, you know, reservation name was fake, number a dead end. Yeah. Now, there seemed to be a lull in the dinner sprees until November 2nd. So they took a bit of a break. Well, they're having a this... lot. That's a lot of filling food, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of calories going in. Foie gras is very rich. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to be hungry for a while after that. <laughs> now, staff at the Pearl, a restaurant that is known for its award-winning wine list, had a similar story. A couple came in that night under the name Baldwin's Regards. I have to say it like that because yes, it do. sounds like something out of a movie. <laughs> and yes. this couple did the exact same thing. They enjoyed the taster menu, but it seems that they came specifically for the wine. Now, they started off with a few cocktails. Bill wasn't anything too extravagant, but then they ordered two vintage bottles, including Dom Pierre Family Reserve. Okay. So they're just like digging in deep. They finished up both bottles before ordering dessert wine. And at this point, they're like, hey, you know, do you mind if we finish off the night at the bar? Just like transfer our bill there. We want to have some coffee, sit in like a more casual environment. And the staff had no issues with this. This is also not something super uncommon if you're like familiar with very high-end restaurants. But red flags started to raise when they instead walked to the front and they're like, hey, can we have our jackets? (laughs) And... The receptionist was hesitant, okay, just yeah. because obvious reasons. These The bills at these restaurants are absolutely astronomical, and I don't think dining and dashing is like a major issue, but I think it's enough of a fear that they are a little bit sure more observant. But the male jokingly told her, quote, come on, we're not going to run away. <laughs> He's like, wow, we just this want a guy cigarette. is... He is gutsy. I mean, the name that he's using that's oh, supposed yeah. to tip him off, the fake Baldwin's props. regards. Yeah, yeah. And now, ah, oh, we're not going to run away. Wow. Of course not. Wow. And so reluctantly, they got their jackets back. And just as the receptionist was worried about, they never came back, leaving their 570-pound bill behind them. Mm. Mm. Manager Russell Cox told the media, quote, they were very chatty with the waiters. They certainly didn't try to stay under the radar. They said they were on holiday from Latvia and they had foreign accents. So, man, this couple's just from like all over the place. Yeah. Are they like, are they from a theater troupe or something? I mean, you can't just go busting off accents like that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Mm. The couple hit again just days later on November 6th. This time racking up. Are you ready for it? Oh, geez. And by the way, Danielle, a $500, like I've had some nice dinners in my life. Mm-hmm. $500 tab for two people is, yeah, wow. yeah, that's, that's top, 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 mm-hmm. top tier dinner. That's yeah. Okay. All right. You're like stressed out about this. I know. You're like, oh. Stressing me out. <laughs> 
This time, they racked up a 965-pound bill at Helene de Rose at the Connaught Hotel. Wow. wow. Another Michelin star restaurant. Crazy. And for from what I was able to see, that would in um like US dollars amount to like 1,500 something. Like it's Yeah. Yeah. That's so much money. Okay. Mm-hmm. And obviously, this must have given them confidence that they were able to pull this off because that's when they went and did a lot of peed where they were captured on the CCTV. They went and did that literally just a few days later. Okay. And despite the fact that at this point, they're being plastered all over the media, there's CCTV footage of them everywhere. They made their way to another restaurant. La... (laughs) I'm not going to pronounce it right. Basically, it's orange in French, okay? La orange? Something like that. See, that was beautiful. I could never. (laughs) I completely faked it. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know why I struggle. (laughs) Like, I can speak Spanish great. Like... Russian Mm. even, you asked me to speak French, and like I'm just not classy enough for that. (laughs) So they went there on November 15th, and this is a very well-known place to dine. It's a beautiful French restaurant right off of St. James Street in London. So we're talking like the center of everything. The ceiling is like this incredible glass dome that's just like beautifully lit. There's tables with like pristine tablecloths. I could never go in there with my children. (laughs) And... They have fresh flowers. It's just a beautiful experience. And they changed their menu seasonally. It was kind of like this ode to all the available local meat and produce. So like awesome restaurant. And this couple had enjoyed their time there without any issues. Like they never like caused a fuss or anything. They weren't like trying to be sneaky or quiet. Um, But at this point, the restaurants in the London area were very well aware of these dine and dashers at large. Okay. And anyone who's worked in the service industry before, you don't take stuff like that lightly because it takes yeah. money away from like the servers who, you know, oftentimes, especially in a restaurant like this, if it's like a nicer restaurant, you only get like four or so tables per night because these people, if it's a Michelin star, you're sitting down for hours. Right, right. To yeah. experience your meal. So it's not like a fast pace. Like this server is working a very long time Yeah. per table catering to just them for an experience and they're relying on that tip because they've only got a couple more tables and so they had about had it okay and so an eyebrow ended up being raised when this couple claimed to be heading outdoors for a cigarette just as they ordered dessert i'm sure everyone in the restaurant was like wait a minute you said you're doing what Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're doing what and so the staff actually ended up following the couple outside they're like no 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 And they look at the mail and they're like, you need to come back inside with us and go ahead and pay your bill before you come out here to smoke a cigarette. And, you know, just saying this bill was the priciest of all. It was actually over 1,000 pounds. I think it was close to 2,000 US dollars. Yeah. And tension leveled out because the man was like, oh my gosh, absolutely. I'm so sorry. I will come in and I'll pay this bill. Follow him in. And I'm sure they took another deep sigh when he handed them a visa. And he's like, there you go. Like, no problem. And then all of a sudden things change when they go to swipe the visa and turn around. The man is basically creating dust behind his feet. (laughs) (laughs) He gave him a bum visa that he stole from someone else. Yep. And then he's hightailing it out of there. Ran for his life. Mm. But again, if you've worked in the service industry and you know, you don't play. (laughs) These waiters through their aprons took off running no. after this man they're like oh no you don't yeah <laughs> they're like we have had enough and so they chase this man and after a little while they finally end up catching him now the woman that he was with is nowhere to be found from wow. the way it's described it seems like she ran like immediately when he was brought back inside, which is important because I have my own theories towards the end. Mm. But either way, they call police. And once police arrive, they finally have a name to put on one of these thieves. And it's not Lupin or <laughs> Baldwin's regards. It's actually, what was this? How do you pronounce? I think it's Janis, Jans Nords. So he is actually Latvian. Okay. okay. <laughs> He's a 27-year-old aspiring Latvian filmmaker. Uh, okay i knew there was some entertainment (laughs) yeah some entertainment tip in there somewhere oh yeah so nords was taken in for questioning where he did end up pretty much immediately telling authorities very regrettably that he had absolutely done this multiple times before i think he admitted to doing this three times prior he's like okay you know what 
you caught me. Um, but authorities, you know, they're like, we know it's been more than three times. We have a whole entire list of restaurants that you've blown off. I think the total was like well over 5,000 pounds. And so they're like, you know, admit to what you want, but we are, you know, pretty close on your tail. Um, and he did give authorities the name of the girl that he had been with, but he claimed that she had absolutely no idea what was going on. Um, and that he'd been failing to pay at all these restaurants that he had taken her to. Okay. That's up for debate, debate, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I could kind of see a situation, I don't know, like where he's dating someone and he wants to kind of show off to her. So he's taking her to those places. And but maybe, you know, that, that will come into play. But it's weird that they're, you know, there's something weird about the fact that they've ordered dessert. Like, so if we're supposed to assume that she's truly innocent, then why is she seeing him order dessert? They go outside to have a cigarette. And, and they just leave. And then they leave. Yeah. Even if he tells how, her, oh, yeah. no, no, no. I left I left cash on the table. We're all good. Ah, I changed Listen, my mind on the dessert. No. I don't want it. Let's. If we're on a date and you're like, we, I know we order dessert. We have to leave. I'd be like, well, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah. And, and for it to happen time and time again. Yeah. I have trouble believing that. Well, yeah. And also, where did she go? Right. Right. Where'd she go? When they come outside one? to get him, where did she go? Yeah. Yeah. I have lots of questions with that. But regardless, they ended up bringing her in. They found her, brought her in, they questioned her. And ultimately, they did release her with no charges because I guess they went with what Nord said, that she didn't know anything. Um, he was not so lucky. Ultimately, he was charged with nine total offenses of dining and dashing. Now, the restaurants at this point had quite a lot to say about his scam. And it caused a huge uprising in the local foodie community because many restaurants were angry that he seemed to have put a lot of thought into his plans like premeditation yep. the names that were given to the faked accents and they actually believed that that um he had purposely left that package behind thinking it would cause some sort of distraction you know honestly the way that these restaurant owners were speaking i didn't understand half of what they were saying <laughs> just they well it's just very different lingo yeah um and so i was like i don't really know what that means but they were not happy i could definitely determine that from what they were saying um and it was clear that based on the rising bill like each place he went it got a little more expensive and then it just skyrocketed he was becoming more comfortable with what he was doing and was willing to push the limits now at his trial his attorney, Bruce Reed, claimed that there was an explanation for his behavior. Okay. And they're like, look, he's a good guy. He just made a bad decision to steal all of this food and run off willy-nilly. They're like, you know, he's got no other run-ins with the law. He recently had won an award from some European film festival for his debut movie. They're like, he's a good guy. Like, he's trying to do some things. But London life hit him very, very hard. Because I guess he came from two Latvian parents that were very well off. And he'd never had to want for anything, but moving to London was an entirely different experience. His money was not stretching nearly as far. And it's definitely a problem, especially when you're trying to impress your, quote, high maintenance girlfriend. <laughs> Literally, quote, high maintenance oh, girlfriend, end goodness. quote. Wow. Now, Bruce Reed said, quote, he was trying to impress a girl who comes from money. I also suspect there was an element of fantasy in Mr. Nord's thinking and trying to dine in the high-end restaurants. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I found very interesting is that all of his movies that he's released seem to be like about criminals or drug dealers or young men like doing whatever they have to do in order to get by or get ahead. Um, and even like his more like his first one that I just released was about this young kid drug dealer who was trying to make money for his girlfriend. Mm. And so a lot of people theorize, like, you took your, you know, fascination and your creativity used for movie making, and you acted it out in real life, and now you're in big trouble. Yeah. Um, and so even worse, there are some articles that say that his high-maintenance, wealthy girlfriend was actually just as broke as he was. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. So they both were just trying to impress each other and just spiraled themselves into a big old hole. Yeah. And, and now, Danielle, don't think for a second that when he gets to the other side of this, he's not going to write a script about it or produce a film oh, about absolutely. it. Like this is, yeah, this mm -hmm. is going to just roll right back into his world of fantasy and this is his next thing. Oh, yeah. And now he's going to be, oh, I've this is based on a true story. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about this romance. I mean, 
Because you look at like all the different things that he did and the names and everything. Like I genuinely think like yeah. he was caught in this world of like fantasy and like I'm going to act this out. And anyway, somehow he managed to only be charged with three of the Dine and Dash crimes. I think it was because he'd only technically admitted to three. And I kept yeah. trying to figure out like how that all worked out. Um, but regardless, um, he did plead guilty to those. And Judge Daphne Wickham gave him a pretty lenient sentence, in my personal opinion. Granted, he didn't harm anybody. Like, it was nothing like that. But um, instead, it's like the most English thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> instead, they just gave him a 12-month ban from multiple zip codes in London. <laughs> no! Don't you dare cross this invisible line. What? They literally banned him from, like, I think it was about 12 or 13 different zip codes in London that are known for having a high concentration of Michelin star and high-priced restaurants. It's almost worse, Danielle, because now he's going to go steal from the people that have less money. I, I was just like, this like, is... Like, how does that help I'm anything? Not, I, don't worry, because they also gave him a 90-day curfew. <laughs> <laughs> and no... Sugar with your tea. And they sent a letter to his mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. So Why are we so like... light on our criminals? Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna spill it already. Same situation in my story. I don't it's get it. Like, I don't get it. I, mean, I know he didn't hurt anybody, you know, or anything like that, but also he was hurting the community like these are restaurants that are all like you know tourism's huge in that particular area and yeah. like it's just shady and it's bad and it's it makes me sad too because every single one of these restaurants has since closed down uh, and like obviously it had nothing to do with him but i'm just like man some of these places are already struggling and yeah it just sucks so he was also ordered to find a way to pay back all of those unpaid bills but i mean that's pretty much it and from what i've seen I mean, it seems he's learned his lesson. I have not seen him his name pop up anywhere in a life of crime since then. And it seems he's just kind of putting all of his energy into producing more movies. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. But like, they should have forced him to be a bus boy somewhere. That's what I'm saying. That's like, like my months. kind of punishment for that. Yeah. Like wash the dishes. The service industry is hard. Yeah. And like, if you've ever worked in... Like, I've never worked in a Michelin star restaurant, but I've worked in, like, a very well-known restaurant in this area. Mm -hmm. Y'all. <laughs> yeah. It is no joke, okay? And it's, like, hard enough to work in the service industry at, like, a mom-and-pop restaurant as a server or receptionist or whatever. But, like, man, like, the entitlement that kind of seeps off people can be really, really hard. And, like, making sure reservations are good and, like, there's a lot of different expectations. And it is, like you have to fake it till you make it like you've got to look fine and act fine no matter what like it's a very very fast-paced hard environment yeah and so i'm like send him off make him make all the food yeah open no. all those wine bottles like yeah now he's got to go make grief. another movie come on no so i mean he had his fun but good grief now huge thank you to standard.com the guardian at bbs the cater and rooters.com for that story I know it's not your typical heist, but like every single one I was looking at, I was like, we've literally pretty much already hit. <laughs> we've already spoken about a similar one. So I was like, I've got to find something like some type of like food heist that's. Well, it has, you know, I mean, it's a coordinated effort. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of impressed in terms of, you know, some of the character -y stuff he did in terms of different accents and things mm -hmm. like that no no i think i think it qualifies it's still i mean stealing I and at a pretty be surprised if you didn't have like all this plans written down somewhere honestly yeah yeah well and is that part of the charge like you know him hanging out with his girlfriend somewhere oh, okay this time we're gonna be from mm -hmm. this country and yeah you know like there's there's got to be there's got to be a whole build up to we're gonna go pull this off because they're doing it time and time again. It'd be one oh, thing over if, and over again. Yeah, it'd be one thing if it was like, oh, it's his, you know, his this high end girlfriend that he can't really afford, and it's their anniversary, and he pulls off this dine and dash, you know, so he can get like their big anniversary dinner or something like that. But that's not what's happening here. They're going out like Absolutely. night after night. <laughs> I would be so scared to do that. Yeah. If I were in those shoes, you know how I would never sleep again. I'd feel so guilty. How would you enjoy it? How would you enjoy it just knowing? Like, it's just, yeah. it's absolutely, I've only been dined and dashed one time in the entirety of, like, my serving career. Yeah. 
And it was so awful for me as a server. And I was so devastated. Yeah. I can't imagine. And yeah, I was I'm only sure looking take it forward personally. to like maybe like a $5 tip. And I was so upset. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you take it personally at that point, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. Those poor servers and like they like restaurants like that, they learn your name. You know, there's just like so much to it. They put a lot of effort into their job. And yeah. What was this kid's name again? Oh, God. Yon. <laughs> I think it's pronounced Yon's. Nords. Yance Nords. But like it's spelled J A N I S. Yeah. I did yeah. look it up and yeah. that's how it's pronounced. Well, if you but. see if you see a movie directed by him, don't go to it. That's what that's, that's my suggestion. He did like I don't know. It's yeah. some strange stuff. It's all mainly Latvian and like he I think he uses a bunch of different friends and stuff as cast and I mean they look like they'd be pretty good. It obviously won an award, but Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Danielle told her story. I've got one to tell too, but we got to wait until we get to the other side of this commercial break. Please stay tuned. All right, you guys, welcome back. Are you ready to see what John cooked up for today? Boodle. Oh, <laughs> with the rim shot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear our second food heist story. And I'm pretty excited because, I mean, as much as there are lots of food crimes, it's like a bunch of small ones that you couldn't really create a story out of. And he keeps talking up his story. And so I'm just, I'm interested to see what he found. Well, I think it's because, look, Danielle, I have to admit something. Oh, no. I've been hiding my true feelings for all these years. I, yeah. and you might know this, I love nuts. I know. <laughs> I do. I love nuts. <laughs> he does. Cashews. He's not joking. I'm not. Cashews, hazelnuts, walnuts, pecans, even ballpark peanuts hold a special place in my heart. But only one nut is on the top of my list. And it's the only nut that smiles. Do you know what that is, Danielle? What is it? The pistachio. It smiles. I love a, pist I love a pistachio. That's my favorite. Yeah. I don't like nuts at all. When you look at him, he's smiling. But pistachios are great. It Mr. is. It's pistachio. a happy nut. <laughs> Yes. Pistachia vera, which is interesting because I also love a vera. I know. This is getting weird. Yeah. That's my wife's name. But uh, pistachia vera is actually part of the cashew family. And it grows as a small tree with those amazing, tasty, edible seeds that humans mm -hmm. have been enjoying since 7000 BC. Yummy. Understandably. Been around for a minute. Mm-hmm. It's said that the Queen of Sheba liked them so much that she declared them royal food, forbidding the general population from growing them for personal use. Wow. Britannica.com says that pistachios are believed to be indigenous to Iran. They grow in dry and warm climates, and those tasty nuts are high in protein and fiber, as well as about 30 vitamins. But they have a lower fat content than other snacking nuts. One ounce of pistachios has as much protein as an egg and about the same oh, wow. amount of potassium as half a banana. That's impressive. I didn't know that. They're loaded, Daniel. That's a lot. That's a lot of protein. They're, They're also ridiculously expensive. They are a bit expensive, which I will get to. <laughs> but they're also good uh, for dieting. You know, I've yeah. been on my little weight loss thing for this past year. P pistachios are, are part of that because you have to open them. It looks like there's a lot more to them. And then when you deshell them, it's actually less. But they're also filling because of all the fiber in them. They're I was about to say, they're super satiating and the saltiness is like... Yes. Yeah. Mm. They also have a long shelf life. And currently, the U.S. produces most of the world's pistachios. I literally oh, eat one ounce every day. But not just of any old pistachio nut. I eat Lord and Ramsey's Spicy <laughs> Nuts. Made spicy nuts. <laughs> spicy nuts made with real Tabasco and high quality fine sea salt. I bet you can't eat just one of my nuts. <laughs> this is quickly turning into an ad. <laughs> this every person that's coming to Crime Con and is part of the final jury, you're going oh, yeah. to get this bag, one of these bags sure right are. here of Lord and Ramsey's spicy nuts. Danielle, these bags. Only twenty nine ninety nine each, and that's that's one point two five ounces. There's about thirty pistachios in there. That's less than a dollar per pistachio, Danielle. That's they're pretty getting, good. They're getting it for free. 
I mean, consider yourselves lucky. <laughs> That's right. Lord and Ramsey Spicy Nuts available for Spice the first <laughs> time at CrimeCon Orlando. Listen, Sorry. if like if 10 years from now, I randomly like have lost contact with you and Google search your name and find that you've started a spicy nut business, I won't be surprised. Danielle, like... I'll support it. Seriously, for me to... Seriously, do it. For me to do this, <laughs> to put this together, don't think that I didn't start running the math. And that's part oh, I'm of... I'm sure you did. That's part of my joke about I would have to charge $30 for a bag of this size. Because you know exactly what's... You've done this already. Yes. it's. You may already have an LLC. <laughs> to make something this good is expensive. Let me just say that. Sorry, I got completely sidetracked. It's fantastic. But, I love it. Yeah. Um, while I'm on this sidetrack, I do want to address another big risk that's on everyone's mind right now. I'm a big pistachio expert, obviously. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get that one where it, the smile, he's just kind of grinning mm -hmm. a little bit. It's not a full mm -hmm. smile. And you try to put your fingernail in there and it rips. Have you had that happen? Oh, no, because I just immediately bite it open. Oh, you just go right for the look from a <laughs> pro. Like, no, I've got a trick. <laughs> you have keys right in front of you. Just grab one of the shells that you've already opened. Oh. And you wedge that in and then you just twist. Well, this is brilliant. See, now yes. I just look like a barbarian. <laughs> yes. Save your teeth, Danielle. Use one of the other <laughs> other shells and you can open it right up. Okay. Anyway, okay. <laughs> um, and that way you're not wasting a very pricey nut. Pistachios, yeah. certainly expensive. Mm -hmm. They're one of the most expensive nuts out there and for good reason. The tree takes up to eight years before they start producing nuts and you won't get a full harvest until they're 15 to 20 years old. Oh my gosh, that's even longer than apples. And I thought apples were super long to wait for. That's like five years. Yeah, um, but the, crazy. the trees do live for up to 300 years. So once Ooh. you once you get them going, you're gonna be eating a lot of pistachios. They also take a lot of hands-on labor to harvest and sort. Uh, a one pound bag from nuts.com usually runs me about 13 bucks. And if you want them with no shell on them, 18 for a one pound no bag. Fun. No, it's pricey. <laughs> now, obviously, California has a great climate for growing pistachios. It was three years ago when the Ag Task Force was dispatched to Seton Farms in Terrabella, which is in Fresno County, California. The Ag Task Force was established in 1999 to investigate all cases related to the agricultural community in Fresno, California. And with good reason, Fresno County is one of the top counties in the entire nation for agribusiness, bringing in billions of dollars every year. They actually hit number one frequently, but they kind of bounce around. Mm -hmm. uh, so why was the Ag Task Force heading to Seton Farms? Well, they produce 125 million pounds of pistachios annually. And that means that they need to get those nuts delivered to their destinations. Mm -hmm. Trucks drive in and pick up semi-trailers that are already preloaded with pistachios. So apparently, a truck drove in, claiming to be from a reputable company that was known to work with Seton Farms. The truck hooked up not one, but two trailers and drove off. Obviously, at some point, the trucking company was called, and uh, when they said, we didn't pick up your nuts, the fine folks at Seton Farms knew they had been taken. Oh, no. But how much could two trailers of pistachios have been worth, Danielle? I honestly can only imagine. Well, I looked up for Seton Farms. Astronomical Set amounts. Yeah, I looked up Seton Farms in particular, and they sell two-pound bags for about sixteen fifty each. If I multiply that by two semi trailer, oh yes, it was two hundred and ninety four thousand dollars in pistachios driven off. Oh, good grief! Yeah. Now, I don't so have. Much money. I know it. I know. It. I don't have the exact details, but it, but it's not like you just drive in and say, "Hey, I'm your delivery guy." Uh, the Ag Task Force called this an elaborate scheme. And when oh, researching yeah. similar cases, I found that sometimes old Department of Transportation permits are reactivated and then used to kind of be the official paperwork to get them in and do this. <laughs> in other cases, people are actually hacking into the computer systems of these businesses and generating fake orders and then their own fake credentials so they can go ahead and drive in and, and pull this off. This is happening in Fresno County regularly this is like a, a common crime that's happening out there at this point a bunch of nut thieves nut thieves <laughs> 
So detectives got right to work. They pulled in resources from several other law enforcement divisions trying to track down the pistachio pilferers and crack the case. Get it, Danielle? That's just perfect. Crack the case. That was a good one. They cracked. The investigation spanned three counties, but they had an ace up their sleeve. The smart operations people at Sutton Farms, they had heard about other heists of this nature happening in their area. Mm. And also keep in mind, this crime is sort of twofold. You have both the trailers exactly. and the product being mm -hmm. stolen. So uh, according to CNBC, cargo theft. And potentially forgery too, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Potentially. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's well, and if you have the hacking component in there, then I you've mean, got, just like, yeah, I mean, layering you can it on rack up the charges on this. Um, CNBC says that cargo theft is on the rise. The FBI says that it's estimated to cost trucking companies and retailers at least 15 billion to 30 billion dollars a year. The average loss is around two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars per incident. And topping their list of most commonly stolen things, food and beverages. What is this about? Farmers in California's Central Valley have been targeted for heists just like Sutton Farms was experiencing for several years at this point. An article from 2017 notes that 150 farmers, processors, and law enforcement officers have been working together to stop nut thieves. That year, at least 31 truckloads were stolen with a total of $4.6 million in losses. Wow. Pretty much using the same scam. Just mm -hmm. fake fake order, fake truck driver, driving on, hooking up, and pulling that stuff and going. That's probably why the good people at Set and Farms took a very smart precaution. They GPS Ooh. tracked their nuts, Danielle. There we go. <laughs> you got to do it. Or at least the trailer that the nuts were in. <laughs> With that info, investigators were soon on the trail and they could see exactly where the pistachios went. The trailers traveled about 70 miles north to Selma, California. There they were taken to an abandoned property. You see, the pistachios had packaging all over them with one of Sutton Farms brands, Signature Farms, Ooh. that was written all over it. So the thieves had to remove all that packaging and they moved the nuts into unmarked crates for their next step. Then... I wonder how long that took. I know. And how many guys are we talking about? Here? I know. Come on. Gonna... Just one guy constantly cracking open nut bags here. Yeah. Yeah. How long was he there? <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, what did they do for their next step? They sold the nuts to an unsuspecting buyer in Madera County, which was another 60 miles further north. Now, I don't know how they made this connection. Maybe he drove the trailers back to his home at some point, but somehow the authorities figure out that this has been pulled off by a 23-year-old man named oh, wow. Bavna Sekun. Wow. A quick look at county court records show a young man that gets pulled over a few times every year, basically, has mm -hmm. numerous driving issues, including speeding, driving with no insurance, driving with no registration, driving with an open container. Hey, even a full-blown just... DUI. Why not? living his life yeah he's like why not let's steal some nuts yeah why not well why not because this guy in driving i don't know they just oh, they yeah. have a magic together there's a special chemistry between him <laughs> and yeah the but vehicle. you know what if i were pulled over frequently i probably wouldn't choose to commit a crime where there is a potential to be pulled over seriously seriously well and even if you're part of some organization because honestly mm -hmm. i have a feeling that this there might be something bigger, like yeah. a 23-year-old pulling this off on their own. I was about to say, own. he's young. Exactly. Yeah. But if you are looking for a wheelman for a crime that you're trying to pull off, I think Bob Bobna would be on the bottom of my list. I don't think oh, I'd yeah. near the top. No. I also found part of a record from 2018 saying it was a criminal lawsuit against him involving two gray vials of blood. But I can't find enough mm. additional information to make any sense that's out it. of it. But <laughs> it scares me, Danielle. <laughs> yeah, that scares me a little bit. What I feel like he's involved in some some strange things. Yeah. What kind of criminal lawsuit <laughs> involves two gray vials of blood? Mm. Um, anyway, thankfully, with that help from the trailer's GPS, law enforcement was able to track down the pistachio poacher as well as all of the pistachios and the stolen trailers. Uh, on top of the two hundred ninety-four thousand dollars in stolen pistachios, the trailers were worth another sixty grand. 
So that brings the total for this mm -hmm. crime up to $354,000. Uh, Bobna was found at his home. He was taken into custody. He was booked on charges of grand theft, looting, to your point, identity theft, yeah. and yep. conspiracy. They also said that more evidence linking him to the thefts was found at his house. I bet I know what that evidence was, Danielle. Did he keep some pistachios? It must have been pistachio shells. It's the only thing I could think of. <laughs> Despite that evidence, in November of 2020, he pleaded not guilty. The court process would go on for years. And in June of 2023, his plea changed to no contest. The court disposed, uh, I think it's deposed, is it? Yeah, it's not disposed. Yeah. They didn't throw it out. Uh, the court <laughs> <laughs> deposed it as a <laughs> felony conviction for receiving known stolen property. They dismissed the grand theft charge for some reason. Ooh, what? I don't know. What, what happens? What's going on today with these cases? I don't know. Uh, I have to assume that they thought that others were involved and that Bhavna wasn't Probably. the mastermind. but And he might have literally just been a driver in the situation. But you would think in that case they would try to like get it, him to throw some other names down or something yeah. for some sort of plea deal or yeah. But they're just like mm. yeah. Well, and the early press in this case was really clear that the Ag Task Force thought that more people were involved, yeah. and they were even putting kind of they were putting the call out in the press of like, hey, we think there's more people. If you have more information, call us. Yeah. Like I saw that time and time again in the early press around this case. So maybe they just didn't have enough. Maybe Bhavna mm -hmm. wasn't going to rat them out, wasn't going to flip like that and just stayed tight lipped. And then they ran it they just, the best yeah. way they could in court. And they had to drop some of those charges. I don't know. I don't know. Um, It just kind of sucks to me that even though everything was recovered, some group of criminals got away with even attempting this. Oh, absolutely. Because like, do you think they might try again? 100%. Yeah. Or, I mean, you saw in my story, someone successful one time and gets out of jail free, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It just lights a fire. Well, I'm even thinking because, you know, this area has been having this type of issue. There's press that's showing that there's people trying to address it. There's, you know, new systems are being put into place. Like some of these farms, when you show up, they're checking your ID, taking mm -hmm. your fingerprints. Like they're doing yep. all kinds of stuff to try to ratchet down on this. It almost has me wondering if Bhavna was kind of brought on as a, hey, we haven't tried hitting this farm yet. Let's get some oh. some new driver and uh, have him, some guy we don't care Make about. Make him do it, yeah. Yeah, have him try to hit that place and see how it goes. We'll see if, if how their systems are. Oh, um, man. Probably. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. He I was. Mean, there's, crops right now are like not doing well across, you know, all of America. People are struggling to get things to grow properly. And so I don't blame them for battening down the hatches. And if yeah. someone's relying on stealing and making money off of places like that and they've upped their security, they're going to throw someone to the wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, get this. Bhavna is being forced to pay $570 in restitution. What I've is that? I had it. That's I have about had it that's 20 bags of of gordon ramsay spice i know nuts, I think. that's not that's, even yeah that's a joke Are you kidding me thankfully he was at least given 180 days in county jail but for a theft of this size that's barely a slap on the wrist so he actually started serving that time just a few weeks ago he turned himself into the tolera county jail on august 18th 2023 he'll also be put on two years of probation where he must obey all laws you hear me, Bobna? Stay out of the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Keep away yeah, from really. yeah. Keep away from <clears throat> blood vials. And no, you can't pistachios. have pistachios. No, you can't have my pistachios. <laughs> Just get a job, Bobna. Yeah, get yeah. a job. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you do want to drive, go legit and start delivering for this great new company I heard about, Lord and Ramsey's Spicy oh, no. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a call, Bhavna. We'll work it out. Listen, you're going to be like those meat companies where they just like send people with truck f like filled with the food and like, hey. Yeah. yeah. Let's go door to door. Knock, knock and be like, right. you want some steaks? Except now it's going to be like, you want some yeah. spicy nuts? You want a bucket of nuts? <laughs> <laughs> you want a nut bucket? <laughs> 
Thank you to my sources, the Fresno Bee, the Sun Gazette, Fox News, CDLLife.com, YourCentralValley.com, Britannica, How mm -hmm. Stuff Works, Tasting Table, a website with the worst name I've ever heard in my life, Rat Ink Hosh. Yeah, I don't like that. What is that? I've got no idea. Makes me think of gray blood vials. Fresno I Sheriff <laughs> and CNBC. Danielle, why are these guys getting off so light time and time again? I honestly don't know. Like with mine, I at least was like, you know what? Maybe, you know, he, again, I was said like a million times, he didn't hurt anyone. You know, it was definitely a lot of money, but it wasn't like a major heist like that. But how do you do that? Like, to me, it's like the scariest part of it is the criminal mastermind behind it. And nobody knows if he had someone that was kind of the ringleader and sent him in. He could just be a criminal genius and they just gave him a slap on the wrist. I think there's also another direction to it. I think we've got there's some organization here that's that's driving mm -hmm. him he did not come up with this on his own mm -hmm. but there's also someone buying it exactly that's the scariest part about this yeah like who is going to oh i met this 23 year old that says he has you know 14 tons of nuts he wants to sell <laughs> like what who who like how business doesn't happen like that that's not no. how these things work so well, here okay well mm unfortunately sometimes and that i have a lot to say on that my extra story is gonna blow your mind because i will never eat anywhere other than my own home again oh and this is one of those things because things like this happen far too often where food is stolen and then resold and there are people out there maybe with like struggling businesses or they just need something for a little bit cheaper that could make them a larger profit and they're totally willing to buy this stuff and i'm just like why please why because yeah. you're selling it to me I found, Don't do that. I found a bunch of comments on a Fox News article, which was probably the highlight of this research job. Uh, this first one, the obstinate judge, I think he's making a good point, kind of in the same vein we're thinking about. Um, I'm not convinced unsuspecting buyer is an accurate characterization. I, I completely agree. I think, mm -hmm. I think he's right. I think whoever is making that buy, they know that they're getting black oh, yeah. market nuts. Uh, Carcini yep. says, I'm shell shocked. <laughs> LSU wins again says, now if they could just make the other nuts in that state disappear. <laughs> why, why they got to go political? Huh? <laughs> uh, because why, who doesn't nowadays? You know what I mean? They're like, I have to throw this in there. Yeah. 314 <laughs> Pi says the great pistachio heist of Tulare County. This is legendary. Oh my gosh. I hope you're right, 314 Pi. I'm banking on it being legendary to win yeah. today. Yeah. Uh President elect Biden says, hmm, pistachios. <laughs> That's it. Just that. Mmm, pistachios. <laughs> Which you know I agree with. Yeah. Oh, I live. But I by would them. not I would me? not buy some black market pistachios. Uh flyover country native said this is kind of a downside uh says only came for the comments i was hoping for more nut puns however well disappointment well thankfully star no quizzy replied to them directly and said beer nuts are always over a dollar deer nuts are always under a buck <laughs> <laughs> look they came in right at the perfect time they it's did like, was they needed did. yep they helped us yeah. out helped us a out. few times where i love a comment section i know i know i really did it's was, fantastic i was like this comment section is too good this this has to go in all right danielle it's time for extra stories i know you were leading into it let's tell let's let's hear why is this what's the name of this story danielle meat suitcase <laughs> This is my new favorite part of the show. Of course, coming up at the end of the show, and we find this new treat in terms of Danielle naming her stories. And you know what? The funny thing is about that is I never name my stories, and you always do, and I always so look forward to it. Yeah. But I have had so much fun the past few times. I'm like, I have been missing out because meat suitcase? Come on. Yeah. Everyone buckle up. We are, we are going to hear the story of meat suitcase. And listen... This is going to traumatize everyone. So, you know, you're welcome. I'm in a state of unrest since I read this story. Uh-oh. It has to do with Walmart. So 
Uh oh. So there's that. January 5th of this year, which again makes it even worse because it's current. Authorities were called out to a Walmart in Ohio after receiving a report of a shoplifter. Now, according to Walmart staff, a man had loaded an entire shopping cart with different cuts of raw meat, deli meat, like any possible meat inside of Walmart, and a suitcase. And he just bypassed the checkout, headed out the door, which is shocking because usually I'm like screamed at after they watch me check out and pay. They're like ready to accuse me of theft. (laughs) (laughs) Like immediately. Yeah. And this man trekked through this, we all know, absolutely massive parking lot because I've never been in a small Walmart parking lot. And like a weird scene out of a movie, you know, where like the car runs out of gas or stops working or like the man's horse falls to the ground. The Walmart security kicked in and stopped the wheel of that shopping cart when it reached the perimeter. So the man, the 62-year-old man, was forced to alter his plans, right? Hold on a second. Is this like an automated system? Apparently, it literally locks the wheel of the Walmart cart at the perimeter of the parking lot so people cannot take them. I have never heard of that before. That blows my mind. Me either, and I'm very tempted to try it at my Walmart. <laughs> That's why they're always after you, Danielle. Go, don't go Probably. trying your crimes at your local Walmart. <laughs> Drive out of town. Go to the next Walmart. Listen, I couldn't try any crimes at my local Walmart because for some reason that's like, the, you know, my local police's favorite station to hang out. Mm-hmm. They like literally park on the sidewalk of it. There's like five of them. Yeah. Not Nothing happens where I am. And so the most that happens is at the Walmart. Okay. Right. So he's like, all right, I have to alter my plans. Okay. Don't worry. He's 10 steps ahead. He got that suitcase. That's why so he, he got the suitcase. Stuff all of the meat he possibly can into the suitcase. What he couldn't fit, tossed into a nearby dumpster, okay? And then he headed off again, suitcase in tow. But he only managed to make it to a nearby bus stop with his stolen goods before police stopped him. This man, this was his 70th arrest. For stealing meat? No, not stealing meat, just in general. I was going to say, this guy's got a problem. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if it was in general, that's just normal, Daniel. I mean, come on. Oh, you know. Yeah, sure. Totally. (laughs) And he admitted, he's like, you know what? This is not the first time that I've stolen meat this way. You caught me. But even more alarming, what has traumatized me for the rest of eternity is that when asked what he did with this meat, he typically sold it to local restaurants who bought it for the tag price. And then they served the suitcase meat to their customers. Why? I'm scared. Why? How does that happen? I don't know. That's this is insane. what I'm saying. I'm only eating at my house from here on out. Wow. Wow. That's insane. I'm glad I don't eat meat. <laughs> I'm considering I'm considering being right along with you. Now, needless to say, he was arrested for theft and unfortunately refused to hand over the list of restaurants that he served. So all those suitcase meat sellers yeah. are just willy-nilly out there. That's not good. This is C, and it's like the whole pistachio thing. Like, yeah, that is so gross. John, what if I've eaten Walmart suitcase meat and I don't know it? You might have, Danielle. You (laughs) might have. It's like like on my freaking Jimmy John sub. Let me just say. I'm so disturbed and upset. Lord and (laughs) Ramsey's spicy nuts made with 100% unstolen (laughs) products. That's good. That's how I'm going to market. Don't you think people would buy that? Wait, <laughs> I made think with unstolen, would. unstolen products. Oh, perfect. Okay. It's That's... going to be like the new organic. Now people are going to be yeah. looking for like unstolen. I didn't steal the nuts. I didn't steal the Tabasco. I didn't steal the high quality sea salt. Are your taste buds no. already? Like I'm already, I'm going to I... open this bag soon if I'm not careful. Are you Look, excited, Danielle? You're going to get to try I'm my spicy nuts. Thrilled. I'm honestly so excited. Bet you can't eat But I'm one. also equally as disturbed that this happens and like it led me down this rabbit hole of heist and then like reselling these things and people buy like oh my gosh they'll steal whole tractor trailers filled with cheese and just let the 
hot cheese sit. And then s- there was one case where like the entire thing went on the shelves at a food line. Oh. And I'm so, I'm in so, just such a state of distress over this. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. I'm not pleased. Well, Danielle, for our final story here, it just goes to prove that not just food, even decorative foods aren't safe and can be part of a heist. (laughs) Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, 2014. Matt Kraft owned his own location of an Italian restaurant franchise chain called East Side Mario's. He heard that a neighboring location was going out of business and he went there and moved two giant decorative tomatoes from the closing location over to his so he could put them out on the grass right in front of his restaurant. People driving by, hey, those are two big tomatoes. Maybe <laughs> I should have some good Italian food. It's right. <laughs> it's what you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. They looked great in front of his restaurant until 2016. He came into work one day and realized that someone had stolen little brother. (gasps) That's what he called the smaller of the two. Okay. That smaller one was about five feet wide. (laughs) So Matt springs into action. He goes to the press telling his story to anyone that'll listen and offering a free four meal dinner at the restaurant for anyone that can find little brother. brother. That's a good deal. Yeah. So people are sending him pictures of tomatoes that they're seeing at other (laughs) restaurants. He's like, no, 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 that's not little brother. (laughs) Weeks turned into months, months turned into years. Matt had given up hope when in 2020 he got a phone call. A woman was running in a nearby park and she noticed something in the brush. It was bright, it was red, and it was big. Matt knew it was the call that he had been waiting for. He dashed out to the location and after (laughs) all those years, there was little brother. (laughs) He was interviewed by a CBC radio show where he told the host, I know my tomato, Carol. (laughs) It was my tomato. It was loved by many, and there are a lot of people who are rejoicing this week. He also told the show his theories, including that (laughs) Little Brother was hauled off in a truck, and that his work of spreading press and awareness around it likely helped bring Little Brother home. Quote, I can only imagine when they saw it on TV and radio and stuff, and they were like, oh no, we've got this (laughs) hot tomato. What are we going to do with it? He also I'm thinks, crying. yeah, he also thinks he'll never have to worry about this again. Quote, I think that criminals across the land have learned that, you know what? We don't mess with that tomato. You sure don't. He also owns the, or he owes the uh, local runner uh, a free four person Italian dinner, which he said he was going to cash in on. He was going to let them come and eat for free. And that's pretty good. He was even going to toss in some free wine. Wow. Yeah. Free wine that he bought off the back of a truck. Some guy drove up in the back and said, this is high quality wine. Just uh, fill up your tub. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Oh my gosh. This. Little brother. (laughs) No, my tomato. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Danielle, who's going to win this month? Honestly, I have no idea. I'm kind of bummed. I should have I, I should have probably just done Little Brother as the whole story. That was it was pretty good. Yeah, it's no, just there's not a lot really, of detail. So, on well, it's okay because I was like I desperately wanted to do the voodoo donut story. <laughs> I was like, how on earth can I make this work? And it just it wasn't gonna work. Yeah. I was devastated over it for like a few days. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I really, really like your story because it is a heist of huge magnitude of just a bunch of freaking nuts okay yeah yeah but you've got a filmmaker a scumbag filmmaker that's taking his yeah. his girlfriend he can't afford he's out doing places. like little mini heists over and over again at michelin star restaurants <laughs> yeah i don't know got I a think, foie gras problem i think it's gonna be a tough a tough vote and 
for everyone out there listening, this is your last chance to vote unless you happen to be one of the select yeah. few that are part of the final jur jury that are joining us at CrimeCon Orlando. So be sure to vote. Oh my gosh. Now you guys. Who told the best food high story? Little brother. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> little brother did right. and i'm just saying vote for me because i can already tell you right now john is already going to bribe people to stare me directly in my eyes next month and make me panic i'm not so. going to be bribing anyone danielle more yes more free he is for he absolutely is danielle. so uh remember you can vote at our twitter x whatever x formerly known as twitter give it up mm -hmm. it's twitter at crime mm -hmm. after pod for the first seven days after this episode drops or you can also head over to www.crimeaftercrimepodcast.com and vote there. We have a link in the description box down below if you're watching on YouTube, and you can still click the little I up in the corner to vote as well. That's right. At crimeaftercrimepodcast.com, you can find all the links you'll ever need, including a few very important ones, mm -hmm. where to find more content created by the amazing Danielle Hallen and myself. You're going to need that when this show ends. I know you are. I'm so sad. I hate yeah. talking about it. I know. I know. You. And a huge, huge thank you, as always, to our patrons. You guys, it has been so much fun. That has been one of like the biggest highlights of this podcast is kind of getting to just hang out with a bunch of you guys that support us here and on our personal channel. So we yeah. really, really do appreciate you guys. Definitely. Definitely. Don't miss the final episode, Florida Person Live. Well, not quite live. It'll be live in front of a studio audience. Live-ish. Yeah, recorded in Orlando, Florida at mm -hmm. CrimeCon 2023. Produced and hosted by Danielle Hallen and the wonderful John Lorden. Nice delivery. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate or review us on whichever platform you found us on. We still like the ratings. Get it oh, yeah. while you can. Yeah. Exactly. Have a great month, you guys, and we will see you again on October 1st for the most bittersweet but fantastic finale blowout. You won't want to miss it. See you again here on Crime After